welcome to Yadi Belly's Kitchen. Today I will be doing a new dish, well, relatively new to, to me and my family, but I'm gonna attempt it anyway. You know how brave we are, right? We're gonna attempt to do gumbo. Yes, gumbo. Now, gumbo is a relatively, as far as I research, gumbo is like a stew or a chili that is native to the New Orleans region. It is what is called Cajun cooking, all right? Now, I'm Jamaican, so obviously, whatever I try to do won't be authentic Cajun, right? So we're gonna try our best, right? Now, it will not be um, authentic or original. It will be gumbo nonetheless, because we will do as best as, best as we can to, you know, highlight as much as possible the Creole side of the seasoning, of the cooking. But, yeah, anything will come out, it'll be nice. Because I had a belly, I do it, and you don't know. Uh-huh. So let me first and foremost apologize or, or put the disclaimer out there to all the purists, to all the Louisiana, New Orleans people, to all those persons who, uh, you know, have a claim on gumbo. This is not trying to replace or to even mimic you know what you guys do this is just me loving cooking loving the, the the style of the food and wanting to try it for myself from a caribbean perspective all right so with that with that disclaimer out there let's get going all right let me look at the ingredients first thing i have onion one white onion i have two jalapeno peppers these are optional of course it's not authentic I have some tomatoes. I have three stalks of scallion. Uh, not scallion. Celery. I have two scallion. I have some holy garlic right there. This is black garlic. Right? See it here? Black garlic. And it's fermented garlic. Okay? I just I use it because I have it. Hey, don't kill me. I have a whole bunch of thyme. Or what do you call it? Thyme. Thyme. The wife says thyme. Lord of mercy. I have carrot. I use carrot because I have it. Not because carrot is required. Okay? I have two dozen okra. I have some bell pepper here. That uh, These are fresh bell peppers. But I also have frozen bell peppers that I'm going to use that I, that's in my freezer. Now, the frozen bell peppers, the only reason why they're frozen is because I don't want them spoiled. So it's not like we're going to buy frozen bell pepper. Okay? All right. Now, the gumbo that I'm making is um, um, three different type of animal protein. First thing, I have some smoke. I can't pronounce that word here. Linguicea sausage. Yeah? Linguicea. Uh, linguicea, whatever. Huh. And and this is, um the, the, the you can use whatever sausage you want, but the, 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 the general... And the most popular sausage that is used is what is called andouille sausage, right? But me not have andouille, me use what me have. Okay, so we have some smoked sausage. And this is pork that is raised without antibiotics. It's organic. It's also uh, them something that uh, no preservative, no additive, no... Hey, 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 hey. All right. Then I have some shrimp. And it's 45 to 50 um, at the size. 41. Oh, 41, sorry. And may have, this is Panamese sweet, um, seafood. Now, this might very well be um, the least favorite from all of the, the something yaso. But nonetheless, hey, a shrimp may find, shrimp may I use. Okay? And this is pre cooked shrimp. Please, oh no, no, come for me. Don't come for me. And then I have about a pound and a half of um, pre seasoned chicken breast that the wifey season up and put in the fridge. How we use the chicken breast like that, you know, and that's boneless. Okay? Then we have some parsley over here. We have some bay leaves over here. Then we also have one container of diced tomato, the one with garlic and onion. Alright? Okay. Then we have some powder seasoning. Make we go on over this. We have some powder seasoning. Alright, we have some mixed seasoning here, which is um some Italian herbs. Basil and them things that we make, we make prepare for myself. I have all day because I couldn't find the, the gumbo, filet, seasoning and them things that which in my supermarket. I have some flour right there, so browning if we need it. 
I have some Cajun blackening seasoning if I need it. Some garlic powder, black pepper. I have some, you know, Spanish seasoning right here so, with anato and them little something there. Cayenne pepper for the heat. I have a couple um, bullion cube. I have some smoked paprika. Alright? So, time to get cooking now. Time to get cooking. What is going on in this pot now is that the, 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 the smoked sausage. Yeah? I take the smoke sausage and I render them down a little bit. Alright, now it's not burned, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why it looks so is because the sausage has been natural cane juice in ice. So that's why it looks so. You understand? So I'm put the sausage in this and make it just burn for a little bit. And then I'm going to take that the sausage out and put the chicken in there and do the same thing with it. And then I'm going to use that same oil here to make my roux. Yeah, I'm clean up the oil a little bit and use it to make my roux. Alright, so one of the things I'm going to find out is that you have to make a good roux. If you don't make a good roux, you don't make gumbo. That me here. So, I work with it. I work with it. Alright? Remember, I tell you, chicken time now. Chicken time now. Okay, so now my chicken is in. And I pretty much just want to get this chicken brown. This oil is um, it has been flavored with the sausage. And, you know, what I did was also, I took out the casing of the sausage because... I just didn't want the casing, you know? You don't know, you can't eat any of the casing, but I never want the casing to come on. So, I take out the casing off of the sausage, and um, that way the sausage can get to, you know, soak in nicely, and then, you know what I mean? I just never want the casing to come on. Alright? So, as you can see, the sausage over there so nicely. Now, I make my chicken brown, and once my chicken has been browned, then I'm gonna make the roux, okay? And the roux is pretty much just oil and flour, all right? And you want the flour to, it's gonna become the thickening agent for the gumbo. And you want the flour to, as it were, get brown. That's from here, all right? Now, it's not, most gumbo take a little time to do because of the different steps that are necessary unfortunately i am west indian and we believe in cook quick and come out of the kitchen fast so you know we never take that much time you know but that is good yeah i don't want the chicken them into bite-sized pieces it's not my family is not that big so i don't have to go you know with a whole host of food i just want it to be everybody get comfortable the chicken actually cook already yeah man, you just have brown up nicely, you know. And with chicken, shrimp and sausage, you don't need that much protein, you know. You just really want to get the, the um you really want to get this the flavour of the meal done. Yeah, remember me tell you. So we'll pick it up with the roux that's coming up next. Alright, so now I've transferred my chicken and stuff. I brown them up, see them there? With the sausage. Hey, I should have more sausage than this, but hey. First time I tried a dish. Yeah. Next time I go cook a bigger pot. You understand? Alright, you see this? What I do is, because I transfer the pot, I never want to lose all of that little juice there at the bottom of this. So I just put some water on it, because I'm going to use it back. Can you see that something I have a little juice there? The little, yeah, render in there. Very, very important. All right, put the, I'm gonna put the thing in a bigger pot in my Dutchy because the Dutchy are work better. You see, with the, with the whole thing, I just have to finish up the dish in the Dutchy. So now I have the oil and I add a little bit more coconut oil to it, maybe about three tablespoons coconut oil. So now I'm gonna add my flour and start my roux. Yes! So you take some flour. And you just add him to it like that. Right? Yeah. Then, you stir him. Make sure them get incorporated. And that's pretty much what the roux is going to be. Alright? Flour and, and the oil. Now, I use coconut oil. You can use whatever oil you like using in your neighborhood. Alright? Now, you can stop stir this. So the period of time where you have it on, if you have it for 30 minutes, 
depending on how dark you want your roux to be, you have to keep stirring this. It's a little tricky at first because you don't know where I really go on, as especially we Jamaican who don't use them type of cooking method yeah, to make roux and them thing there. It just look like a waste of time, but believe you me, folks, you have to see the end result. Alright? So this is gonna go on for maybe about the next, uh, may I estimate, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on, on, on your, your stove. Um, I have the heat on medium. Yeah, I look a bit above medium. You can't leave it, folks. If you leave it, it will burn. And if it burn, you have to start over back from scratch. So, you have to stand up yourself for the next 15 minutes and stir my roux. But the roux is important. As far as me know gumbo, the roux is important. Now, I see some man on TV do some different things with them. When them throw water in it and make one big old piece thing, you know. Make it be this, this, um, this like flour, flour soup me not do that me I make the thing like how the, the Louisiana people them and the New Orleans people them say I must make it me I take my time and make the thing go and do you understand at least the part they can, me can say the part there is um, authentic to the Louisiana people them right so me I go and do my room me call you back me come back from the phone me come back from the camera so me just start up your foolishness you come back on the camera when my roux almost done. And see the color change already? Yeah, the color change already. So make could see what I go on now. Roo, roo, we are ruin, we are ruin. Yeah, better zoom. Mm. Alright, look on this see. You see it look brown now? Yes, sir. Wow, and it smell, you can smell the difference. It smell very nutty. Mm -hmm. It smell like really... Like when you have corn. Yeah, like when you have parched corn. For chew, for chew, for chew. Um, Alright, so at this point, I'm not going to brown. Sorry, sorry, Louisiana people. I'm not going to brown. My spatula has been up. I'm going to add in my celery, onion, and sweet pepper, bell pepper. Alright? Wow. And different, different, different smell this in the house. So I never use yet. I never use that smell yet. Wow. And you pretty much want this to now to start do its own thing. You want this to get toasted a little bit now. And get a little bit more translucent. Yeah. I will eat this thing about it's like a record, trust me. It's like a record. Look the man. I did, I think I did a good job with the roux. It's for my first time. Alright. Now, from here, so now, folks, I pretty much Billy have a build for flavors. You understand what I'm saying? Build for flavors. Alright? I feel like it wants a little bit more oil. You think so? No idea. No idea. Me and you have no clue. What is that? That's the, the pan juice then. Yeah, but I want this to toast up a little bit more. Wow, folks, it, it is so nutty. Yes, Andrew. <laughs> and it just have this different type of flavor, type of vibe, you know. The roux, the roux really makes a difference with this dish. Alright? Now I'm going to add my pan juices. Hey, tell me, me, me I do it wrong, me I do it wrong, whatever. That just absorb quickly and yeah never add some some more vegetables and add my water now. Hmm? Me now use the chicken stock because me never want the extra sodium and you know the so chicken stock have um, extra salt. I prefer add my salt, you understand? So I never add buy my chicken stock. So now this is where the stew comes in now, because everything I, I left you have left this is stew now down now. You understand? So I will start add my water, the amount of water we need. I am gonna need about um maybe five cup of water. 
regular cup, not, not my little cup that I use. Let's start with three, that's a three, right? Let's start with three. And then you turn up back your stove. And you're gonna make your thing start bubble like chicken gravy. Yeah. Wow. Now some folks will say, yeah, you should have make it darker. Guys, what I learned also, very important, is that gumbo, is made according to the people them who make it taste, flavor, standard, style. There is no hard and fast or set fast rule to making gumbo. So I want my another color here. Me work with it. Yeah? Me will work with it. Alright? No more on the stove cup to a boil. So I'm just um Yeah. And then we start adding the rest of it with something them. You see? Okay, okay. So, see my thing I come up now. I add back one more cup of um, water. As I say, you could add chicken broth if you want. And I think most of them, most people use chicken broth. But yeah, we'll keep it healthy. So now I'm going to add my diced tomato. Right? And the idea behind this is that it's slow cook. Everything I'll slow cook, yeah? So, I'm going to add my carrot. And see me have some, some tomato there, because I go on that at the end. Because we don't want our thing, just cook, everything cook out, you understand? So I may use back some more tomato at the end. Just say, have a little crunch. And I like fresh ingredients, folks, so that's why I may use back for fresh um, stuff, you know? Now you can make your, your, your thing come up to a rolling boil. And as soon as this come up to a rolling boil now. What is the difference got, between rolling and the other type of boiling? Because sometimes it boil and, and bubble up too much. It oh. bubble too high, you just want the pot to roll. You know, rolling boil, Mr. Rolling boil. God, I got Mr. Rolling boil, mm -hmm. rolling boil, Mr. Rolling boil. All right, let me add some more stuff. Add the okra in now. No. Now I'm going to add the, the, some seasoning, right? Onion, garlic, um, green onion. No, green onion, garlic, and the and the um, the um, fermented garlic. All right. What about the thyme? May I add the thyme too. Oh, and a little jalapeno in that too. And then may I add my thyme. And never add a bay leaf. Yeah, that was critical. That was one of the critical things them where the people them use bay leaf. So never add, you know, a couple of bay leaf. Now your, the idea behind this is that you can make this cook, make the thing cook. And I stand up pressure it. Now rush it. Make the gumbo cook. Alright. Just scrape down all of the roux off of the pot side. I put in the as soon as it come to a boil, I can put in the okra because more want the okra cook to the okra supposed to cook in. Alright, so you see, something start to come down to a nice boil now. I turn on the stove to medium. Yeah. And now I'm going to add my okra. I'm going to add in okra now. Most people, in New Orleans, some people fry the okra to get out the sliminess. Some people don't. 
most people miss it, most people don't. So me just do it like how me like it. Me, me not mind okra slime, because in a Jamaica we know that okra slime is very aphrodisiacish. Oh. Oh. Is there such a word? Nice. Yeah? It's very aphrodisiacish. So I'm going to add my okra. And now I'm going to add my chicken too. I'm a, I'm a sausage. Yes, man. Chicken and my sausage. As I come, this thing I come down now, you know. Come it, I come down now. Don't forget to have all of that juice there. Yeah, then I go cut up my parsley. I add my parsley. Oh, mama. The last thing I go add are the shrimp. The last thing, and because they, them already cook, you don't want to add them because they're going to get tough. Wow. What about wow. your powdered seasonings and stuff? Yeah, I'm going to add my powdered seasoning. Just I make it get up back to temperature. And then, I want to just add it now? Hmm? I mean, I think you can add it now because it wasn't that cold. Wow. But, but I may add a little bit more water. Mm -hmm. You know, just to accommodate me. Um, but remember, the shrimp though is going to spring. No, man. The shrimp are right. Shrimp is good. So I'm going to add one more little cup of water. Because it, it, the, the, the good thing about the roux in this dish is that the roux thicken it up right quick. You know? So. I'm going to start adding the seasoning in them now. Has you, have you ever seen anybody put mushroom in it? No, but hey. It's never too late for a shower rain. We're already out there like that, you understand? You want to put mushroom in there? Mm -hmm. All right, let me put some smoked paprika. Now, once again, folks, bear with me. I don't have the whole package on seasoning we don't have. I use some um, cayenne pepper for the heat. Yeah. Give it a kick. May I use um, a little bit of the Cajun's Choice Black Meat Seasoning. Please, I'm not come for me. Don't come for me. Uh -huh. All right. May I use some garlic powder. Yep. And may I use a little bit of that, that seasoning here, the, the Spanish seasoning, a little bit, just a little bit. Because I like the colour, I like the colour pretty, you know. Now I'm going to use my browning because the colour is nice. Use some fresh black pepper. May I use a little bit of my basil mix. You want to sneeze? I may use some Old Bay. Old Bay are the closest to <laughs> the Louisiana thing, you see? Nolines. Yeah, you see? And then we just stir in back with seasoning now. Again, the flavor them start kick up already. And this is just gonna be left alone to do its thing. I shall return one day in the future. All right, folks, my pot almost come down now, you know. May I tell you that it is so good. It looks so nice. The color is just this nice, rich brown color, bubbling like chicken gravy. Watch it. Me keep the fire low and slow. I uh, may I tell you, I love Wagwan. Yeah, mark you, I never tried this before. But I love Wagwan. I make little boy taste a little bit tight and him, him grab bread. I give him a spoon and say, taste some. And the picnic grab bread and say, I'm ready. Yeah? So, what I have to do now, I have to add my little finishing touch, right? My tomato and some of the sweet pepper them from in the freezer. I have to add that. And I have a bunch of parsley that so I chop up and wash and everything. I'm going to add that. And then, a couple, couple more minutes, just a couple more minutes, I'm going to add my shrimp and make him just go and stay there and permutate. Yes, I know permutate is not a word. The word is permeate. But hey, I'm Jamaican. I've used different words before. This one simply means make it simmer. Alright, so bear with me and my foreign words. 
permitate. So the pot of it permitate. Yeah, but you're pretty. Look how the gumbo pretty. May I tell you, may I tell you the truth? I am feeling good about this one. Wife, we are gonna put on some parboiled rice, cause Louisiana where Anna. Yeah, and them have parboiled rice in Louisiana. And then from there so the rest as they say is history. Next make a put in my shrimp. Yeah. And pot come down. Come all the way down. Okay, guys, my gumbo is yeah, it have arrived. It has arrived. Beautiful, wonderful. May I tell you everything. The, the flavors them marry nicely. I'm just have it on a simmer right now. Yeah. I may tell you the truth. I'm glad how the turnout. For the first time, I'm really happy with the turnout. So now I wash my shrimp them. I wash them clean and everything. I remember them previously cook. Yeah, other people use raw shrimp and cook it down in it. Yeah, that's the authentic way. This is my quick and easy way. My first time trying it. So I'm just gonna stir them in. Yeah, I make my shrimps them just go in at the pot and permeate. Yes. Them previously cook already, so you don't really have to pressure yourself with them. You understand? You just want to add them in now. And make your pot just go and simmer down. I'm going to use a little bit of um, coconut spread, uh, you know, in place of butter. And yeah, and that's going to be the final thing. I'm going to add this coconut spread now. See? This is Earth Balance Organic Coconut Spread. And me use this instead of um, butter. You know, you don't want to add no butter, you use coconut, you know, coconut oil, coconut spread. And your coconut spread just have a basically give it that little tropical vibe, like an island flavor. Yeah. And your gumbo, well set, well put together, well simmer down. <laughs> Lord help me, Jesus. Yes, simmer down. Your gumbo is cooking, simmer down. Oh, the shrimp, them just put in, simmer down. See the chicken right there, simmer down. And piece of sausage right there, simmer down. Oh, the gumbo look nice now, simmer down. Hey, next up is the plating. Remember, me tell you. Mm-hmm. Okay guys, so rice cook and everything and I'm going to try to present this gumbo here, right? Now remember I say it's a stew, right? So we are going to pretty much try to plate it like a stew, alright? So first thing I'm going to do is put the rice there and then I'm gonna may I do it like restaurant style, so bear with me. But now I'll take out that yet. Watch this now, watch this now. Put the gumbo around it. Make sure some it's some sausage in that. Find some chicken. And some shrimp. Yeah, and some some okra. All right, hold on. You have to clean up around your plate, you know. Clean up, you know. This I'm gonna move that out of the way. Then we have a few sprigs of parsley. We have a few sprigs of parsley. Let me just go. So, I want to get trouble. How that look? Look nice, though. No? Mm -hmm. That's how it looks. You sound excited. <laughs> Come on, how does that look? If we can get the rice up, then it'll look really good. 
squeeze a couple of it. Oh, come rice, come. Oh, come rice, come. Come, come rice. Show me on a slide, yeah. See there? Yeah, yeah. Boss thing we say. Yeah. Oh. There you have it, folks. Mm -hmm. Chicken. This looks. Shrimp. And sausage gumbo. Yeah. You had the belly in our. With a little bit of okra. And a lot of vegetables. Look in very divine. Look very authentic. I don't care what not in it and what never do. Remember me tell you. Trust me. It looks so divine. Mm -hmm. Hey. Remember to like, share, subscribe and comment. Yard belly in a foreign. Yard belly is kitchen. Yard belly TV. Tell your friend them boy. And if you have something that you want us to try in our kitchen, be free to, to just drop that in the comments also. And we will try our best to make it happen, alright? So until next time, eat wow, good. good. <laughs>